Welcome everybody to three minute soccer coaching tips. Better coaching by connecting theory to practice. Today we're gonna to tackle a huge topic, the 4v4 game with the under eight age group. So let's take a look at some of the basic things. Number one, in my opinion, no throw-ins. Don't have the kids throw the ball in. The field's so small, they don't need to be doing throw-ins, it's just gonna go out of bounds again. Have them dribble the ball in or pass it in. I, I actually favor giving them the option because if you just have them pass it in, it's four defenders covering three attackers. So it's nice to give them that option. Also, if you're using pug goals, I think that they're too small. So if you're gonna have one pug goal on each end line, it's too hard to score. Maybe you put two pug goals on each end line for a total of four, so they could switch the switch the field to try to score on the empty goal. Um, ball rolling time is massive. Less talking, more playing. 85% of the time that ball should be in play. Maybe put like a three second time limit. Hey, within three seconds, you gotta dribble or pass the ball in. Get things moving. If you're gonna give them general instructions, like hey, let's get in a diamond shape. They should know to be side on, how to receive the ball to their back foot. And we should train them these types of very simple under in there. When we take a look at a bat basic passing pattern, right? Play to the back foot, play to the back foot, play two touch, nice and simple. Here we have back pedal, right? Soccer specific movement, back pedal, receive to the back foot, play on the next touch, nice and easy. Here we have what's really, really important to me is using constraints, using these conditions to teach the real game while they're playing. So here, the blue team, when the ball's up in these two, in, in, uh, in the attacking third, we have to have a player, at least one player, in the middle part of the field. So there's always attacking support. You also, there's a line going down the middle of the field. You have to play, when you have possession of the ball, you have to have players on both this side and this side. So minimum of one player on each side. So now you have a nice attacking organization and a nice shape. When the ball's in the attacking third part of the field here, no players are allowed back here. So again, it ensures a nice shape to your simple uh, ideas. Here, one of the things that you could do, you could always have them train rondos, learn how to play to the back foot. See, this is a nice, simple 4v1 diamond shape. Play to that back foot. Can we get the ball forward? That's how you score in soccer. Once they get that really well, can you do 4v2? Can we do transitional 4v1 and then add another delay? And we can further go on with these nice conditions here where we have three lanes, right? And the, the, the striker and the center back, we'll call it, go in the middle lane, the right back, left back, go, or wingers, whatever you want to call them, it's only 4v4, go in the wide lane. So the coach rolls the ball in, two defenders run in, the whole team runs from the sideline, takes their shape as the ball's being rolled in, and now it's four against two without the coach having to say anything, you already have the perfect shape, right? Can we play to the back foot? Can we go to score a goal? So if red intercepts, then they go to goal. Here is a really, really nice setup. You have 2v2, but you have two outside players who are the left and the right back. So now we have a nice diamond shape attacking organization. Can we score it? The ball's turned over, red joins the yellow in their attacking shape. They have to hit a yellow outside before they can score. These are nice, simple ways where it's game representative. It is the game. You're teaching the principles of play without having to say it. So those are my quick advice on the 4v4 game model.